The events of Flight 103 with 243 passengers and 16 crew members during its journey from London to New York are told. This accident is a real accident that happened. Based on official reports and eyewitness testimonies. October 26, 1988 near Dusseldorf German police have been following a suspected group near the old town of News for weeks, and they will carry out an operation today. The operative cop finds something unusual in the trunk of the car. Radio Policemen examining the device see that it is full of explosives. 21 Iraq 1988 Flight 103 takes off from London. There are 259 people on the plane. Most of the passengers are American. On the first leg of the journey to the United States, the plane headed northwest, over Scotland. This route is one of six preset routes. Lockerbie is one of many small towns the plane will fly over. Located on the Scottish Plains, the inhabitants of the town are unaware that they live under heavy air traffic. Pan Am calls this 747 plane the Lady of the Sea Clipper. While the plane is fixed at an altitude of 9,500 meters. The captain communicates with the tower and reports that the plane is fixed at 9,500 meters. Captain James B. McQuarrie, 55, is returning home like many passengers on this pre-holiday flight. 9.5 kilometers down, Lockerbie is getting ready for the new year. While Michael is talking to a friend, a strange and powerful sound fills the house. Looks right out the window. When she looks carefully, she sees objects falling from the sky. She sees a tall, slender object very high on the right, its surface in flames, about to fall towards Lockerbie. When the object hits the middle of the town, the town turns into a battlefield. Lockerbie is in flames, terrible flames rising into the night sky. All the horror of the crash of Flight 103 is clearly visible in daylight. A few houses on the ground were wrecked and burned to the ground when parts of the plane crashed. A huge crater has formed at the south end of the town. In this disaster, 11 people died in Lockerbie, along with 259 people on the plane. Plane crash investigators reached Lockerbie soon after the crash. More than 1,000 police officers and more than 600 soldiers are scattered around the crash site. One by one they're starting to pick up the pieces of debris. The extent of the disaster is difficult to comprehend. They detected debris from the air by helicopter. Looking from the helicopter, they saw the debris as a funnel extending outward from Lockerbie. Aircraft parts are scattered over a very large area. It quickly becomes clear that Flight 103 disintegrated in midair long before it hit the ground. 747 consists of more than 6 million parts. The aircraft's cockpit is eerie proof that Flight 103 has disintegrated in midair. The cockpit, detached from the rest of the plane, is located 4 kilometers outside of town. Researchers are looking at the locations of switches and control buttons in the cockpit. There's nothing wrong with the cockpit research, everything seems fit for flight. Investigators soon realize why the town of Lockerbie has suffered such devastating damage. The main piece of debris that fell on the town of Lockerbie was the wing section of the plane, the left and right wings fell together with the middle cabin section. Researchers estimate that the plane was filled with 90 tons of fuel. It had a mass of 150 tons that crashed almost vertically at 500 knots per hour, had tremendous energy, and that's what formed the crater. As the grueling debris collection continues, researchers look through maintenance logs. These records raise concerns about the age of the aircraft. 
This plane was the 15th 747 made by Boeing. This was one of the older 747s, made in 1970 so it was 18 years old and had about 75,000 flight hours. Perhaps while flying over Lockerbie, one of the important parts of the plane was broken. There are two obvious possibilities, the first is structural bankruptcy, or the second is sabotage. Now the FBI is involved in the investigation. Two years ago, an Indian airline jet was shot down off the coast of Scotland. In that crash, vital evidence was buried deep in the ocean along with the plane wreckage. But the wreckage of Flight 103 was strewn across the Scottish plains. Investigators and the FBI are collecting the remains they found on the ground and looking for blast damage on the pieces. In the first 24 hours, four organizations claimed that they bombed the jet. Six months ago, the United States Navy shot down an Iranian passenger plane, 290 people were killed. Although the American government claimed it was an accident, Iran swore revenge. In the weeks before the accident, other threats were made, an anonymous warning came to the American consulate in Helsinki that a bomb would be planted on a Pan Am flight departing from Frankfurt soon. Authorities deemed the threat unfounded, but a notice was posted at American embassies. Researchers make a tremendous discovery. A piece of suitcase path they found. There are small marks on the metal small craters that will give the bomb away. The Scottish planes are about to become the world's largest crime scene. British labs capture critical detail. She detected two chemicals used to make plastic explosives in parts found near Lockerbie. Just five days after the accident, researchers find their evidence and announce it to the world. The crash of Pan Am Flight 103 is now officially considered a crime. Researchers were curious about the eruption process. They're transporting parts of the hull to a military hangar outside the town. They started putting the plane back together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. They find where the bomb started to tear the plane apart. The fuselage part of the plane here is not split, it exploded into pieces. Explosion site just outside the front luggage compartment. Researchers are particularly interested in metal compartment of A4041. Just behind frame 700, where the explosion damage was the most, the metal container was badly damaged. As you place the pieces, it can be clearly seen that the of A4041 is carrying the bomb that dropped the plane. The bomb was in the container and in a suitcase. According to this evidence, the suitcase containing the bomb had come from a connecting flight. While the researchers were collecting parts of the container, they detected a piece that did not belong there. It is determined that this piece belongs to a radio brand. A confusing discovery is made as the investigation continues. The tape deck in the Lockerbie bomb, although made by the same company, was slightly different from the one seized in Germany. Investigators understand that the suspects arrested by the German police are not responsible. British experts examining the smashed suitcase remains identify the model of the suitcase. Only a few thousand of this brand were produced and sold all of them in the Middle East. Also identified was a piece of clothing that appeared to have been in the suitcase, which had probably exploded very close to the explosion. Most of these garments were made by a single manufacturer and were only sold on the small island of Malta. In the Matla, the researchers find the shop where the clothes are sold. The shopkeeper offers them a clue, the most important thing she says is that her person has a Libyan accent. It was only two weeks before the attack on the Pan Am plane, in 1988 Libya was healing the wounds of several clashes with the American army. The country was in isolation from the world and its leader was extremely anti-American. Perhaps this attack could have come from Libya. 
Examining the luggage records of Flight 103, the police identified a suitcase that had been taken from Matla to Frankfurt earlier that day. The suitcase with the entry number B8849 was sent to England Heathrow Airport. When it got there, it was placed on the second floor of cargo container of A4041. One year after the accident, experts find a circuit piece among clothes from Malta. It is thought to be part of the stopwatch on the bomb. The FBI has pictures of timers for bombs used around the world. But they can't find a match for the one used in the FBI Lockerbie. They're sending a photo of the circuit to the CIA. Finally, they find a matching example. The timer in the hands of the CIA was seized in Africa a few years ago. Two Libyan men were caught at the airport with the timer and several kilos of explosives. As the crime investigation gets more complex, the accident investigation is getting clearer. Almost two years after the Lockerbie disaster, criminal evidence brings investigators to Zurich. It turns out that the timer that detonated the bomb belonged to a Zurich company. Twenty of these were made and given to the Libyans as gifts. Crime investigators connected the timer that detonated the bomb to Libya. They know that Libya has recently entered a military conflict with the United States. Now all they need is to find the bomber. They finally caught her in 1999, she was a Libyan state official at the time of the disaster. He was arrested and found guilty. He is serving a life sentence for being responsible for the deaths of 270 people. The Libyan government provides $2.7 billion compensation to the families of the victims of the accident.